So guys, welcome to the, what I can only describe as the epilogue, the, the post raid, raid series uh, review. And uh, during this episode, I pretty much just want to cover two things. I want to go over the entire, uh, how many raids, the statistics, the skills, which tasks we did. And then I want to go into my thoughts and um, how I feel like the raid series progressed and what I would have changed if I did it again, which I will be doing it again. And then I would love it if you guys can chuck some comments down below with feedback. Um, I'll be writing them all down and uh, sitting down and going through a lot of them with the editors uh, to figure out how we could make this next raid series as good as we can. So um, we'll start off with uh, my overall. So with this one, uh, we did 166 raids and hit level 41. Now, um, 150 to 160 raids is about where it usually is for me to hit level 40 when I'm not doing it too quickly, when I'm not trying to rush through it. Um, and, and to get that into perspective, if you were to have the same knowledge base as myself and you were to try and do like level up in Tarkov, if you did say two raids, you know, a week or oh, not a week, probably if you could do a raid a day, that's, that's about six months, six months, you could be level 41, which is, you know, it's, it's not going to happen that way. It won't work unless you have the same knowledge base and you play like I do, but um, the point I want to try to make here is it is possible to actually use a lot of good guns to actually explore a lot of the game and progress really far without having to like do lots and lots of raids. And there was no handouts during this. This was on standard account. I was upgrading the hideout. I was doing lots of other things, but most importantly, I was just getting my tasks done. And that knowledge base to get those tasks done will actually progress you further in this game than anything else. So uh, 166 raids and a 48% survival rate. Now. I did try and play, I guess the word would be safer on this account. I tried to make sure I didn't die too much and all that. Usually on my main account, I don't really care. I just want to get my task done and I just charge through. Um, that can work either way. Sometimes I'm a lot more uh, lucky. The start of the raid series, I got smashed on uh, customs. I pretty much couldn't survive a customs raid throughout the whole raid series, which was really frustrating. And um, you could tell that frustration in some of the episodes. But... Uh, survival rate is not really a good indicator of how good you are at the game. I, I always like to say it's based around your playstyle. So with my playstyle on this, I was actually trying really hard to survive to survive as to, to complete tasks, and um, that was the purpose. But it wasn't like anything besides that. If I was actually just going to play purely for fun and nothing else, then I would <clears throat> most likely have a lot lower survival rate. Um, one thing that I didn't really overemphasize on this was I didn't want to. Um, always just be like, this is the best way to make money on that, on this and that. And I did do some money runs on that, but um, I guess I get a little bit lazy with some of the decisions I make, and I really shouldn't do that during the raid series. But um, with surviving raids, I would always just do whatever it takes to get the task done, which, in my opinion, is the way to do it initially until you get a little bit of a foundation. Because at level 40, you have every trader unlocked. And that might change next wipe, we don't know. I don't think it will change straight away if it does. Um, one run through, so run through is uh, not counted towards your survival rate. So it's actually not, you don't survive on a run through. Um, so just to give you a bit of uh, eight survives in a row. I think this was mostly done on factory. I can't remember exactly, but eight survives in a row. Uh, it's very good um, for the shit I was putting up with on some of these episodes. So it is what it is. The thing I do love about this uh, raid series is because I do it purely off stream, there's no external influence. So um, I don't think I get streams not very often, but if I do, it's generally player scavs, it, it, to my belief. Um, like, you'll kill a heap of players, and you'll be in the middle of looting, and then five minutes later, which I shouldn't be there five minutes later, but five minutes later, you'll just have, a, like, a, a swarm of player scavs. And, um, yeah, so that's generally where uh, the survival rate will get influenced online with uh, streaming. But with this series, I don't have to worry about that, which is great. One kill away from the perfect number. It would have been the perfect number to finish on. 666 is the 665. Let me take note on with kills and the kill death ratio. So I know a lot of people are like, what's your KD? What's your survival rate? Kill death ratio is absolutely pointless until they change two things. They need to change uh, PMCs killed and scavs killed compared with uh, deaths to PMCs, death to scavs. Because um, then you can actually get a more realistic number. So for example, if I died 60 times to scavs, 60 times to scavs, and got that many kills, that's going to be a different kill death ratio to if I died only 20 times to PMCs and got that many kills, for example, which I'd have like a, a 10 kill death ratio against PMCs or a, uh, you know, um, a lower or higher on scabs. So 
Uh, and it also does affect, affect play style, how you play the game. Um, so I don't, I don't really like to look at the uh, kill-death ratio very much. But the fact that I've only died 85 times and I've killed 195 PMCs, and this was over the entirety of a wipe. I started this account, I think, about two months into the wipe. Um, I can actually just check. I go up here. Uh, it was a month into the wipe. So uh, the wipe started on the uh, 25th of October or tw 20, maybe the 20th of October, somewhere around there. So about a month into the wipe, and the episodes progressed over the next six months. So um, there is, you know, a mixture of who, the type of people I was playing against. Sometimes early players where uh, they weren't as geared, and then the influx of players that happened over the um, the drops period around the end of the year slash start of January. So a uh, little bit involved there. To ignore this number. This isn't the total hours in raid. Oh, sorry, in in the game since the account's been active. So um, not in, not from the reset of this account, but since the actual account's been active. So. Um, just to take note, like my main account's got like 4,000 hours there. So just don't even pay attention to that um, uh, account lifetime. So that's the actual day that I think I've reset the account, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I've definitely played this game. I would have done 333 hours in, oh, 192 days, five months. Maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Um, that's pretty much all I need to really talk about on this side. Uh, value of items in stash. Now, obviously, I played it very loose and aggressive at the end, and, and blew a heap of cash at the end. 19 million rubles. A, a big, a big contributing factor was that was the uh, thick item case that I sold. Um, but when you look at stuff like this, I know it's the end of the white, so the value is very low. But um, these items do add up a lot, and uh, it, it does make a big difference. Moving across to uh, skills, I want to touch on this one a fair bit because they. The strength and endurance did get reset halfway through this, and it was very frustrating because um, I needed the strength skill up to the next level, to level three for the um, for the hideout. So because of that factor, I didn't really want to care too much about leveling up my strength again, even though in those next, I don't know, 20 episodes or, or whatever it was after the reset, um, I still did get, you know, 15 skill points by throwing every nade I found. Um, so... Uh, I do talk about it a lot, but you should throw every single grenade you find. That would be uh, really beneficial for you. Um, endurance, like I said, got reset, so it, it, you can't really pay too much attention, attention to it. The charisma skill is almost... It's, it's, it's a level 7. I just about hit level 7, and there's a task that requires it to be, I think, level 10. I don't know if I've got the yeah, ideas here. Level 10. So, a bit of work to do with there, but uh, it's because of how few raids we've done that that's not leveled up. This one's leveled up purely by looting, um, so you just want to loot everything you can. Assault rifle skills and the recall control of the set down here. Down here, so seven and assault rifles, five. This is going to affect your uh, your recall skills. Um, personally, I don't really even focus it at all. Some people really care about how you know much recall they can reduce. If you really don't like going down that path, shoot off all your ammo at the end of each raid if you can afford it, and you'll level up uh, your recall control really fast. And then with the assault rifles, um, it's all about hits. You want to hit on target, so. Just shooting targets is going to level up your assault rifles really quickly. Alternatively, you can reload the SKS from the top load. That will speed it up there. Um, besides that, search skills well and truly on the way to level 9, which is needed for the task. And the health skills level 6. This one needs to be level 10. It's one of the most annoying skills in the game to level up. Um, and it is what it is. So let's go with that for now. Um, moving over to tasks. I'm going to go through each trader individually really quickly. Um... Now, the initial tasks were no issue whatsoever. The Punisher series did take a little bit longer, um, but this is normally the focus I have. Punisher Part 6 is always going to be the focus I have when I do a standard account playthrough. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm doing the uh, a standard account playthrough. First thing I do is I focus on Prepper. Now, if you have an Edge of Darkness account, I wouldn't even stress too much about this. I would supplement any other task around the Prepper task. I would not focus on the Prepper's ones first. But um, if you have a standard account, this Epsilon container is a 2 by 4 container, and it's worth its weight in gold. Perfect Mediator is a free thick weapon case um, when you get to uh, level 40, pretty much. Now, the Grenadier task is actually really frustrating. Um, there is ways that you can do it. I, I was going to show it as uh, shooting people in the legs and dropping nades at them. The other way that worked really well um, that I did this a while ago was... I did nighttime factory with an MVG and just some VOG grenades. And I would just watch people run around the map, wait till they like killed a scab or went to loot. And I would just throw VOGs down from the rafters. And uh, it worked really well. 
Um, it's right because they don't know where the nades are because they don't see them coming and they don't know where you are. And they just literally either run on top of them or they just blow up before they even move. So um, worked really well. This quest isn't actually required for the Capra container. And so I didn't even stress too much about, about it. Um, but it does unlock the ability to purchase the Ash 12. Um, I don't know if next wipe that's going to be required for it. But uh, for now, it's not that big a deal. Um, most of the therapist tasks go pretty smoothly. You don't have to stress too much about it. The, the one sticking point that sometimes people will run into was healthcare privacy part four, but they added this quest, which is give two levels to health um, uh, for 400,000 rubles. Now, I think this has been lazy. They changed it from being like, I don't know, it was like X amount of XP uh, skill points to two levels. Um, it varies depending on how much, what level you are, how much it gives you. So if you can get to level four before using it, then I probably would. But I think once you get to level four, this quest is no longer acceptable. So I don't know. Um, health skill, this is annoying. This is the most annoying skill and uh, or skill to get to level 10. And um, it is what it is. I don't really know how I can supplement that besides the fact that it's just frustrating to get done. Um, this is the quest that most people don't realize how awesome it is. Um, it costs three Ophthalmoscope and three Lead Xs. Now, even if Lead X is like 1.5 million rubles at the time, um, and it's going to set you back four and a half million rubles, and then probably about 300k for the Ophthalmoscopes, so just say under five million, these thick item cases will always sell for a lot. Even early in the wipe, they will sell for like 10 million rubles. Um, so you'll make a profit just by handing these in and you're selling your thick item case, and then you've got yourself, um, well, 20,000 XP, but you've got a thick item case. Um, oh, sorry, the cash bonus from that. So personally, I would always just get this quest done as soon as you can and then move on from there. Most annoying task in the game is decontamination service uh, it, along with the setup. Earlier in the wipe, this is so much easier to do. Same with setup from Skier, which I'll, I'll show you right now. Um, the Skier task uh, setup, which is to kill 15 PMCs on customs and you must be wearing your Shunker, Scav Vest and using an MP series shotgun, which is a 133 or a 153. These two tasks is what will get people frustrated at the game more than anything, um, particularly on the on the quest for the Kappa. So take note of that. Um, these ones will be easier to complete earlier in the wipe. So um, if you can get up to these quests faster, it will help you out in the long term because they're very frustrating because when you're running into really geared people all the time, it's just frustrating. Um, this one goes along with setup, but it's not too difficult. Uh, Flint, stress resistance. This is just leveled up by actually uh, taking damage without being on painkillers. Moving over to uh, the Peacekeeper. Now, we only have Wet Job Part 4 and then the Wet Job Part 5. The Wet Job Part 5 will unlock... Um, no, it's Wet Job Part 5 or 6 unlocks the guide. Now, if you get to the guide, um, I personally don't find it too difficult, but it's my theory behind it is um, you just accept the quest, you do whatever quest map you want to do because you feel like playing whatever map. When you complete that map, then go do factory. After you have factory done and one other map, doesn't matter which one, you go into labs and get labs done out of the way early. And you've now got three of the seven maps done, um, which for anyone who doesn't know, the guide requires you to complete all seven maps without dying. And then uh, once you have labs done, get a group of mates together if you need to, and then do every other map at night time and just run. Like, honestly, that's how I do it. Um, it works really well. I don't use the group. I just do it my, by myself. But I just avoid players, get to the other side of the map, kill one scav, and then leave. That's pretty much how it works. Um, it would have been nice to get the guy done on the raid series, and I'll make sure next season I will. Um, Gunsmith part 15, 16. Easy XP. It's not a big deal. Shooter born in heaven. Actually, um, I actually like this quest. I know a lot of people hate it. But personally, it's one of my more favorite quests. Not because of the fact that um, it's hard. It's just... It's, it's like an achievement and figuring out ways to put yourself in the positions to get this done is really nice. The only thing I wish this would um, be, like, wish would happen is this quest was actually started a lot, a lot earlier. To unlock this quest, you need to get farming part four done, which is the graphics cards and CPU fans. The earlier in the wipe you can get um, to farming part four, the cheaper the graphics cards and CPU fans will be. As late, later the wipe the, uh, goes, the more people will want them for um, the... For the Bitcoin farm, and then when that happens, the graphics cards skyrocket. But early wipe, not many people will be paying, it will be buying graphics cards, and the faster you can get to uh, graphics cards, the more beneficial it will be for you. Then you get on Shooter Born in Heaven straight after Farming Part 4. Um, I should, is Farming Part 4? Or is it Bad Habit? Oh my god. 
If it's not, I'm fairly confident it's farming part four. If it's not, it's a bad habit, but yeah, it's definitely farming part four. Sorry, um, just getting confused here. All right, um, yeah, pun uh, guns be part 15, 16, super easy. Nothing to worry about there. And that is pretty much mechanic completely done. Uh, Ragman, now these quests uh, can be quite frustrating. Cruise mode, we're just waiting on doing that. The last survive of Sales Knight is super easy. Um, the quest after that one, if I'm not mistaken, is handover a Goshen P. Um, when it would have been focus. There we go. Uh, it would have been a lot easier to get the uh, Goshen key this one than it will be next wipe. There is a spawn on customs um, for it in the bus near New Gas, but um, this should be able to find a Goshen key either in jackets or on the flea market at a relatively good price earlier on in the wipe. There'll be a bit of a spike, but this um, the quest that's after this one won't be too big of a deal because it doesn't lead to anything. It's just free XP. Um, fuel conditioners, labs is the best spot for that. I would have been able to get that pretty easily if I did a couple more lab runs. Third skill, nearly there, nearly done and dusted. The stylish one doesn't require, not required for Kappa. I was never going to do it during this series. Um, maybe next season I'll, I'll do like, I don't know how I would farm killer and I just did like 10 raids um, back to back how fast I could farm killer and show you my strategy for it, which I think wouldn't be too bad. Textile part one and two, um, this just unlocks clothing and um, that's it, gives you money and clothing, um, which it's not too difficult. Um, I just wouldn't have any focus on it because, you know, as I find them, I pulled them aside, but it's not a massive deal there. I'm finishing up with Jaeger. So Jaeger's quest, um, a lot of people don't like them. They will be changing next uh, wipe. Uh, we don't know how far or to what extent. Um, sniper series, I didn't really focus too much on using the Mosin too much, but I probably will next wipe um, for the uh, raid playthrough here series. I'll use the Mosin a lot more earlier. I would like personally to be on this quest, have level five sniper before I hit shooter part four, which means you need to use the sniper at every opportunity or the Mosin at every opportunity you can early on. Um, Fuel scouts between ten, uh, between tw nineteen, sorry, twenty one hundred and zero three hundred without using MVGL thermal site. Pretty straightforward. Um, if I really want to get that done, there's there's heaps of methods for doing that. You can do uh, labs when the left hand side time is between that time, and just kill raiders whilst doing it. That um, you can do it passively that way. You could just go nighttime factory and kill the scabs in there, or um, that. But it's not too difficult of a task. Uh, the Rishala with the golden TT. Killing Rishala is the easy part. Finding the golden TT is the annoying one. If you find a golden TT at any time, and you uh, as soon as you pick it up, try and get out of the raid as soon as possible. Save that found in raid golden TT and hand it in late. Like, save it for this quest. Because then all you have to do when you get this quest is kill Rishala. You hand over the golden TT you've already got, and you're done. Um, it's the same with the Sturman stash key. It's the same with the killer's helmet. But all three of those items you should be putting aside, in my opinion. Um, flash kill three PMCs blinded with the flashbang. I find this quest fun, but it's not really a good quest. Um, flashing them is not as bad as flashing yourself. I think flashing yourself is stupid. Uh, and the food, find this food store. It's just super easy. It's just underneath. I don't know why I didn't do that one. It would have been an easy 9,000 XP. That's covering all the tasks um, and skills. Finishing up with uh, the, the gear that I had in here. Now, um, I usually do some sort of similar setup to this. I don't normally have a pistol case at all. I would normally just have it similar to this. I don't normally keep my stash very tidy. Uh, it is what it is. People don't like it. I don't really care. Um, but that would be very similar to how the top of my stash would normally look. Um, what I probably could have done would be something like this, to make it look a bit neater. Um, but it would normally look something like this. Sometimes I have full ammo case row across the top. And then down the bottom is where I'll have scav junk boxes and I'll have anywhere up to four scav junk boxes depending on what I'm doing. Um, I usually try and have docs cases earlier on and then move over to six, six cases later. I'll have a sick case for every single map. The only map that I'm thinking about not using six case, sick case is labs and reserve. Labs because of the intel spawns and same with reserve. Um, but every other one, sick cases are better. They hold more keys and they hold more items besides intel docs. Um, and you put your... Uh, dog tags in there so that's usually what i do with that one and um yeah that is pretty much everything to do with the stash i don't really change much else um i try and have one of each of the containers what you can do also is put your thick weapon cases up the center of your uh scav junk boxes but interest too much about doing that because i only had the one scav junk box 
So now I want to talk about how um, the first season went. Um, this is really, I don't know how to put it. It's, uh, I guess I'm self-critiquing and then I want your feedback on top. So um, pretty much the raids episode one to 35 was entirely edited by myself. So I just want to give you a bit of perspective of how much time goes into an edit, just so you can understand why there was a few inconsistencies. Um, filming an episode is the, the length of the episode probably plus 10 minutes, which is loading times and random stuff. So if an episode goes for about 45 minutes, it's usually about an hour of filming. Um, then on top of that, uh, I have to change some OBS settings to make sure it's in 1440p in the recording and I keep it at a really high bit rate. I then have to import it into Adobe and because it's the file size is about 50 gig, that takes up to, I don't know, probably 10, 15 minutes. Then I usually proxy it and that takes another half an hour um, just so I... It just looks at in a lower quality when I'm editing, so it makes it faster to edit. Then the actual edit itself takes the entire of the raid, plus uh, having all the stuff go in, some arrows and, and all that stuff. Usually an episode can take me anywhere between two hours and three hours to edit, if it's just a pretty straightforward edit. Now, when you put all that together, then another half an hour to export. Um, I don't really sit around when I'm exporting or uploading, but still it's like half an hour to export, half an hour to upload, make a thumbnail, put in the description and have it all good to go. You look at it about five to six hours per episode of effort. Actual putting all time and effort into it. So that's just to give you guys an understanding of how much time goes into making an episode. Um, so when, you know, people like one of the next raid episodes coming out, um, there's actually a lot involved. So episode one to 35, I was trying my best to get uh, a five episode a week schedule happening, um, but it was really difficult because of all the time I was putting into filming and editing, I was losing days of streaming and, and trying to figure out where my priorities were, living a life somewhere out of all this stuff happening, the, um, the drops event and then my channel blowing up on Twitch and there was a lot going on. So uh, the raid series took a fair bit of a hit, particularly in the middle. And then uh, my cousin started helping me out with some of the edits. Uh, he taught himself Tarkov via the Watching the Raid series and also how to edit using Adobe Premiere Pro via editing the Raid series. So um, he started off, uh, you know, it was, it was a few changes and all that had to happen, but he got really good overall. And uh, I would say to a slightly better standard than what I could edit with uh, the Raid series because mostly he had more time to do it. Um, and so episodes 36 up to 70, the most recent one, he's done all of that. I didn't get my new editors to touch any of them because I thought I might as well let him finish it off because it's something he's put a lot of time and effort in and he should deserve the credit for that. Um, the last, I think, five thumbnails will be, uh, from the new editors because thumbnails actually do get more clicks uh, when they actually look really good. So uh, I really like the new style of the thumbnail. Uh, I'd love feedback on it if you guys like it. The, the main focus on the, the thumbnail at the moment is the fact that there's consistency um, that you guys know which ones are the Ray series. And on top of that, um, they stand out different to my normal thumbnails. Um, so when you look at it, you know that's a, a Pestoy video, but also part of the Ray series. Um, so that's where the focus is on that. Um, but yeah, it's quite time consuming. And um, we once my cousin came into the actual picture, he actually started helping out more and more by adding cool and new things. Like the end screen map of where, where I went over the whole raid with where the kills were and where the uh, deaths were and all that stuff. Um, and we played around with different ideas throughout the, uh, the actual episodes itself. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the in-depth uh, information that was coming up. Um, I guess what I would say is at the start, there was probably a lot more because I, I was showing certain things, but I didn't want to overdo it of the same thing over and over again. Say I found Tashonka 40 raids. I didn't want to say this is used for General Wares Quest 40 times. If you'd watched episodes 1 to 10, you've seen it enough. You don't need to see it again for the next 30 or 60 episodes. So that was where that was with that. I definitely do want to keep, keep putting information up there and maybe every now and then I might bring up that point again. So um, of showing older older things just to keep it going through your head. I know it is a bit of a playthrough series where you guys get to see how I progress through a game, but at the same time, I like it to be uh, informative as well because I, I like to really teach you guys how I find the game enjoyable. And if, you, if I can just give you that little bit more of an enjoyment, when you play the game, then hopefully you guys will play the game longer and enjoy the money you invested into the game. Um, and for the people that just want to watch the game and me play the game, then they got that opportunity too. Um, some of the things that I've been thinking about for the next season um, is I'm going to aim to do a five-day-a-week schedule. Um, one of my editors will be 100% dedicated to getting the raid series done as his highest priority. Um, because I think it's definitely one of the more driving factors for my YouTube channel besides the guides. I think there's a lot of people out there that actually just enjoy watching Tarkov playing 
like someone playing Tarkov and that knows what they're doing and is informative about it. Um, so they will, uh, one of my editors will be working purely on getting those raid episodes out. And I'm thinking about a Monday to Friday schedule, um, which I think five a week is is kind of nice. It's it's seven a week is probably just going to be too much work for me to actually make sure I'm still getting enough time in my life to actually live life as well as you know film because um, five episodes is going to take me at least five hours of actual filming. And um, it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up when you consider I stream on average around 50 hours a week. Um, and then I've got, you know, all the other stuff on top. And this is just the raid series is another five hours. Then I've got to do all the guide filming and all that. So it does add up. I think Monday to Friday, five episodes a week. If you guys think that maybe it should be on different days, maybe like Sunday to Wednesday or something, um, let me know. But uh, that's where I'm thinking. Um, I want to include stuff like uh, maybe mini maps halfway through the raid to show where I am um, or when, where a big battle goes down. I might be able to show some sort of positioning maps. I don't know how these maps will be incorporated yet, but I think it'd be cool to have something that's not too in your face, but definitely something you go like, hey, this is where it is. He is when it went down and this is where the enemies died or something um, that would just, the video wouldn't stop for it, but it would just be in the flow of the video. Um, and you wouldn't be losing any actual information of what I'm looting or where I'm going. Say maybe if I'm like reloading a mag, um, you know, something could pop up or something. I'm still not really sure how I want to incorporate that, but I think there's actually, there's opportunity to have that little bit of extra information there. Uh, the end screen maps, I want them to be a lot cleaner and more detailed. My cousin started that. I think they're really great. And I definitely want to continue them on for the next raid season. Um, new pop-ups, I want them to be, all, anytime there's something pops up on the screen, it's going to be nice and smooth and incorporating in those pop-ups. I might have it, so uh, every now and then there'll be a little uh, card that comes up the top. It'll be right up that very top corner there, and that would be uh, giving you links to the guides for uh, some of this information, keeping it uh, nice and clean and sleek so it's not overly distracting. But if you wanted to find out more information for those guides uh, or for that task or, or something like that, um, it would be readily available for you. Um, that's pretty much the only major points I have to do with the actual editing of itself. I'm, I'm, I, I also want to give a bit of freedom to my editors to be able to, you know, make this how they see they could uh, in, improve it as well. Because um, one of my editors, besides or before he started working with me, never played Tarkov before, um, so he's been learning via watching raid series episodes and and new player guides and playing the game as well taking his own notes of all the feelings he goes through when he watches um, and plays the game. So um, I want him to use his information there. But guys, if you've got uh, a moment uh, and you want to chuck down the comments, my editors and myself will be reading every single comment that goes into this video. Um, and we just like any constructive feedback. Um, if you think it's shit, I have no problem with that. Or if something is shit, I have no problem with that. But say it's shit because of a certain reason, that would be really helpful. Or uh, I didn't, you didn't like something. I know a major factor is going to be consistency of episodes. Um, so I would like to have an actual, um, like a season schedule of when you, you're gonna know when the episodes are coming out. Um, that is definitely gonna be a driving factor because I know there was a lot of frustration with people when it was like, oh, when's the next episode coming out? And I'd be like, oh, it's in two days time. And it was like three days time, which might not seem like a lot, but I know that does annoy people. And I, know I try my best to always keep everything up to date for you guys. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up here, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you uh, enjoyed it, this video, any of my videos, make sure you give them a like. It really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. Like all the videos that you like on YouTube, um, it really does help out. Subscribe, smash this, um, the notification bell because there is a lot of guys coming out. The new season of the Raid series is going to be coming out um, within the, probably the first week, 10 days of the actual wipe. Um, I might say, say the wipe happens on Monday. It'll be uh, the following Monday or probably the first episode of the Raid series. Um, besides that, guys, um, lastly, I'll see you next time.